Hi, this is your host, Sopin Bhartia, on behalf of the Linux Foundation. And today we have with us David Mark Clement, Principal Engineer at CTO.ai. Today we are going to talk about this introduction to Node.js training that is started by Linux Foundation. Uh, before we go there, I want to just quickly learn a bit about you. I've been working with Node uh, since about 2011. Um, I got into it because uh, I wanted to uh, m find something that was uh, good for the for building sort of real time stuff back then. I came across it. There wasn't a lot of documentation. There wasn't a lot of books, and I ended up uh, putting in a, a book proposal and writing a book called Node Cookbook, which uh, is now in its fourth edition. I wrote the first three uh, and the third one with some some guest authors, but uh, another person has written the fourth edition. Um, but yeah, so I started off by by just sort of really deep diving into Node and, and the Node ecosystem at the time. I went from doing that to uh, doing contracting and consultancy, um, ended up with a company called uh, Nearform, where we did a lot of uh, different uh, projects and consulting and different things like that. Um, and then uh, as part of uh, the, the conference speaking and the different things like that, ended up getting involved in, in creating the certifications uh, that we'll probably talk about, and also this sort of this training that we'll probably talk about as well. If you look at uh, Node.js, I think it has been around for almost 12 years now, and it continues to remain one of the most popular, um, uh, most used, one of the most used technologies. So I want to understand from your perspective is that uh, what contributed to to its uh, uh, significance, importance, even in today's modern IT and cloud native world? There's a lot going on there. I think one of the, the key things is uh, JavaScript. JavaScript is the, the lingua franca uh, of programming languages just because of its uh, presence in the browser. Um, pretty much uh, anyone who's, who's programmed uh, uh, that, that deals with anything that ends up going to the web has at least you know done a view source and looked at uh, and looked at that. So uh, that's that sort of that familiarity I think was was responsible for some of the early success. I think that uh, JavaScript as a language, as an event driven um, language, is both compatible with user interactions like in the browser, and it's compatible with network interactions like with Node. So using JavaScript as a mediator language. Uh, it has, I think, been key to a lot of its success um, because it's because of both Node and then uh, uh, the browser and the browser before it. I think uh, at some point a network effect started to kicking as well uh, in terms of how many people use JavaScript, and that made it sort of a commodity language, which means that it's easier to hire for. So if you if you build things in JavaScript, you as as a as a company then uh, you, you can have access to a, a, a market that has uh, sort of a wide uh, selection of, of, of engineers that may know JavaScript and something else as well. Um, so I think that's, that's a big part of it. I think the other thing was in the original days of Node, uh, having a small core and keeping it quite small for a while um, led to a lot of innovation uh, in, into building different types of things with it. So you can build CLIs with it, you can do, do IoT with it, as well as your as, as websites and different things like that. So the fact that it's more of a platform uh, uh, just, just has allowed uh, that, that dynamic to, to grow and to, for different people to do different things with it. And then there's NPM, of course, which is uh, the, the package manager and registry. Um, for Node um, and the front end space coming in and using NPM for packages in the front end space created a, a, another dynamic where you have this crossover between front end and back end. And again, that's another hiring plus. You can hire people that work uh, with JavaScript on the front end that could also potentially do back end stuff. Um, so I think that's a lot of what has driven the, the success of the language. One other thing about JavaScript as a language is the is the 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 nature of the language itself it was it was written very quickly in a in a sort of uh, a sort of chaotic tumultuous time the browser wars in the 90s um, and i think in a way the language itself um, sort of is a little bit chaotic and that in a, sort of represents reality a little bit more in my view than languages that are, are much stricter um, you, you, by, by, by having sort of a, a messiness that's inherent in the language, it, it kind of, it, in my mind, 
helps me to think about how to how to code in a way that represents the real world as much as possible. When we look at Linux Foundation, you know, they keep coming up with reports that there is a huge uh, gap in supply and demand of a lot of, you know, uh, talent pool. So what is the situation with Node.js? How does the demand and supply of talented people look like there? What are the pain points? Yeah, I think there's, I think there's a supply and demand problem in tech generally, right? Um, but obviously, the, the Java landscape of, of from coming from the 90s and forwards, there were so many people that trained in that at university and different things because that that just was the default language and it was going to it was the language of business and things like that. The the sort of evolution towards using JavaScript because of the things we discussed about it being the lingua franca and different things like that um, has led to a, a, a you know a, a need for for people who do that. Um, it, like uh, to to date, really, um, it's a a lot of a lot of hiring has been done just based on experience. There hasn't been any certification or or, or official certification by a foundation. I mean, or, or training. There's been training, but not that leads to certification. So um, the, I, the 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 supply and demand problem, I think, to a certain extent as well, is. Um, Establishing what someone's skill level is in the language, um, and and hiring on a sort of a standardized uh, scale uh, for for that skill level, um, and that's that's very difficult to quantify in any programming language, um, and uh, it seems extremely difficult to quantify in, in JavaScript because of this because of the fact there's so many use cases for it and app, and ways to use it. Uh, and it, it's also a very um, flexible language. It can be used in different ways in and of itself. Um, so when it comes to uh, to all of that, the, one of the things that I've worked on to try to help with um, selection uh, and employment and different things like that is uh, figuring out a way to create this a sort of a standard level where on, on a pragmatic uh, level, you can uh, determine whether someone has the the skills needed for this particular job, and that's that's one of the main reasons I got involved in in working on the certifications. Right. So let's just uh, go a bit deeper into the the, the Linux Foundation's you know online course, which is a free course for uh, Node. I want to just uh, can you just tell a bit more about what it is all about? Um, who is it targeted at? There's a free course on on EDX. Um, there's also um, uh, there's also two other courses uh, for certifications, and these are all provided by the Linux Foundation. The free course is a, a sort of a, a slightly deep dive kind of ramp up, throw you in the deep end, uh, and and build some stuff. Uh, we build a CLI tool, uh, we build some uh, mock services, and we build some real time services as well. Um, and, and then put them all together in, in this course. And it's, it's really just to, to give people um, a way to sort of uh, not just dip their toe in the water, but kind of uh, immerse themselves in, in, the, in, in building something with Node.js and seeing how that feels. Um, and it's, it's, it's there to help people acclimatize to um, uh, the versatility uh, of working with Node. Um, and to potentially then take next steps from there uh, to to work to work on other things with Node. You, you can go in different directions from that from that free course. You did talk about there are multiple courses. Uh, can you just give a quick kind of uh, overview or summary of the free course? So the free course is um, uh, six chapters, um, and it talks about. Um, uh, it starts with a front end uh, that's just given to you, and then it helps you build uh, a back end to it, um, but where you're you're mocking uh, some of the back end pieces, um, and it's a focus on uh, um, when you're working in an environment, uh, an enterprise environment or startup environment. It doesn't matter. Uh, you don't always have access to services in local development. They might not exist yet, or there might be problems with just getting the, the operational parity right in your local environment. So um, the, the first chapter talks about how to, uh, how to build out these, these mock services that you can use to integrate uh, a front end with uh, so that you can get a happy path, a happy path kind of flow uh, um, of, of, of say data between a front end and a service or a service and another service. 
Um, then it goes on to, to building a, a CLI tool um, that, that integrates uh, with, the, with that service as well. And then we go on to building uh, real-time services to show some of the uh, um, versatility that, that Node has uh, in, in dealing with uh, um, just like real-time mediation. It it's, can be really good for that as well uh, as the other things. So once somebody has completed this course, I have two four questions for you. Number one is that what is the next step for them? Like you have prepped them about the technologies. What is the next that they should do? Number two is that once they have taken the course, what are the things that they are capable of doing? So in, in the last uh, section of the free course, we, we do talk about what the next step should be. I think the, the, the main one is uh, to move towards um, getting certified because um, uh, if you go through the, the certification training, um, there's an amount of rigor that's applied that um, uh, puts you on a level that, that we can establish that from a practical point of view that you can actually build things with Node. There's two certifications. One's the JavaScript, uh, sorry, the, one's the Node Application Developer certification and the other is the node services uh, developer certification so in the free course we actually build some mock services but the uh, services um, uh, developer certification and the training is a focus on on, on building real world services and of, and also covers uh, security this is a really common use case in in building uh, things with node uh, for for enterprise and startups um, just building JSON RESTful services. So we have a whole certification dedicated to that because it is quite a common case. Then we have the Node Application Developer uh, certification um, that, that covers the, a broad surface area of use cases with Node. So the focus isn't on, uh, on trivial, uh, like minutia, like do you, do you understand like uh, the details of certain core APIs or library APIs. The focus is on, um, here's a practical problem. Can you provide a practical solution with Node, either using the core APIs or using libraries uh, or using a framework? So um, if you go from the free course into, into this mode, um, both of those courses prepare you for, um, for, for workplace uh, um, activities. Um, for, for doing things that are actually practical with, with Node. Um, and then if you can go through that and you can get the certification, then you can show to an employer that I've met a, a minimum standard for working with Node, which um, the certifications are uh, upper intermediate level. Um, they're, not, they're not easy, um, but they're, they're, um, that's, that's the whole point, is to make them hard enough that the rigor is applied to show that um, that you have what it takes to 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 uh, be paid to to work with Node. Awesome. Before we wrap this up, a last question that I have for you is that why should Greenhorn or new developers they should look at Node.js as a technology or language or, or a whole platform to build their career on? So why why should new developers get into Node.js? I think that's a really interesting question because. Um, the first thing way to answer that is to, to think about where is Node going? Like, is Node going to last? Um, because, you know, if, if, you, if you invest so much time in, in specializing in Node, you're going to want it to last, you know, for maybe, maybe at least 10 years. Um, so does Node have 10 years uh, left? Definitely, easily. Um, so much stuff has been built on Node that in, in terms of maintenance alone, like we're not saying goodbye to it anytime soon. Um, there are newer languages out there. The Rust is a very compelling language and different things like that. Um, so it, to a certain extent, it depends what you want to do. Um, with, with Node, your positioning is the, f the front end of the back end. So you're not necessarily building uh, um, uh, highly integrated pieces. Um, you're building pieces that integrate with other parts of the stack most of the time. So if you have a leaning towards uh, the front end as well, then it can be a good space. But equally, I know people that have come from doing architecture and, and, and back end pieces and move into working with Node. It's kind of a middle ground. But um, if you're getting into the industry, um, JavaScript is in high demand. Um, 
learning Node means you learn JavaScript, and if you know JavaScript, then you can do browser stuff as well. Um, so you've got this nice cross section of things that you can work with, um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's. It, there is no right answer to like what language someone should get involved in. Um, but I think that Node is a good answer for what you can get involved in. I think that there's so much going on with it and there's so much that's already been built with it that um, it's a no-brainer in terms of hireability. David, thank you so much for uh, joining me today and talk about not only the important significance of Node.js, but also the resources that Linux Foundation is creating for, for, for those who are you know, interested in the technology. And I look forward to talking to you again. So once again, thank you. Thanks very much.